Next, we will discuss the new concept of extensions. When we create a model in a new package, this indicates that it is a new separate assembly. Our model or package can reference other packages and models, and therefore other elements. However, a specific element can only exist in one model. So we can reference the Venn table from the application suite model in our new model, but we cannot customize that element as part of the application suite model. We can only change that specific element or XML file if we are overlaying in the application suite model. So if we choose to customize an element in a different model, we have to create an extension of that element. In order to be able to create an extension of an element from another model, we must ensure the model is being referenced in our new model. There are several benefits to this approach. The extension approach, approach is a best practice as it cleanly puts our customizations into a separate assembly. It does not touch the standard application at all, therefore we do not need to compile the entire application suite. Also, this improves design time performance and reduces the costs associated with servicing and updating environments. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a new model in the Visual Studio development environment. So one of the most important things about starting with development in Visual Studio is if you are developing for Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, you have to be running as administrator. So when you open up Visual Studio, you can right click right click on Visual Studio and run as admin. Now, a nice thing that you could do to avoid having to do that every time you open, um, I'll go ahead and close out of Visual Studio. And what we can do is right click on Visual Studio. We'll right click on it again here on the actual program. And I'm gonna go to properties. Next, what I can go ahead and do is on the shortcut tab, I'm gonna click advanced. And here I can choose to always just run as admin anytime that I open up this application so that I don't have to do the right click every single time. So I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll apply in OK. And now I won't have to worry about always having to right click to open as admin. It will do it automatically for me. Now, if you don't open and run as admin, you will get an error, not necessarily an error, but um, a warning basically letting you know that you have to be running an admin if you're developing for 365. So we'll go ahead and create a new model now, and I'll go to the Dynamics 365 menu. We'll go to Model Management, and we can create a new model. So from here, uh, the wizard is going to display, and I'm just basically gonna start adding my parameters as the first step. So for this, I'm just gonna call this Extension Testing. And for the publisher, I'll just go ahead and type in Publisher. And then you can specify the layer that you are working in. I'm just gonna stay in the user layer. We have the version that automatically is populated for me. And then I can just go ahead and put a description. We can see, um, we can change the display name if we want to. Um, I can you know, do that, but I'm just gonna leave it as the default and I'll go ahead and click next. Now, this is really important. This is where you're going to specify if you are extending or if you are going to be overlaying. Um, so we are going to be creating this model for extension. So I'm going to select create new package and I'll click next. And now what we need to do is select our reference packages. So again, if, if you're going to be using the extension method, you need to reference packages in order to access the objects or elements within each of these models. So I'll go through here. It's generally a best practice to make sure you select application foundation platform as well as the application suite and then any other um, models or packages that you're going to be accessing the elements. So I'm going to go, for instance, to the fleet management package. It's important to note that you'll see the package and then in the brackets, we'll see the model that that is a part of. Um, things like general ledger are important. If we scroll down tax, um, we also have unit of measure. Um, so you'll just want to go through and select all of the packages you are referencing. You can go back later and change your reference packages using the update parameters option. So I'll go ahead and click next. 
And then here we can see a summary of the model that we have created. So uh, we do want to create a new project. I'm not going to make this my default, but if I did want to, um, I could select make this my default model for new project. So anytime I create a new project, it's automatically going to be added to this extension testing model. I'll go ahead and click finish and then a box will display to create a new project. And I'll just go ahead and call this one as well, extension project test. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And then a project will be created. And then we can see over here on the right hand side that we have our extension testing model that we are working on the extension project test project within this model. Now, I do have a couple of options if later on I do need to update this model, say I'm trying to extend an object that's within another package or model and I'm not referencing it, I can change that. If I go to the Dynamics 365 menu, Model Management, I can update model parameters. So I would just go to the model that I need to update. Click Next and then I can go in and reference other um, packages if I need to, maybe cost accounting, and click Next and then Finish, then I'd be able to um, create extensions for those specified objects if I needed to. Now let's take a look at viewing our package dependencies, and you can do this and view a graphical representation that shows which packages and their models have dependencies on other packages within Visual Studio. So we can do this from the Dynamics 365 menu, so I'm going to go there. We'll go to Model Management and we can view all package dependencies. When we do this, we can see that there's going to be a lot of different packages and we can see we have the application suite, which contains most of our elements for the system. And then if we look at the very bottom, we can scroll and we can see the application platform, of course, at the very bottom. And then right above that, we have the application foundation. I can click here and I can zoom in and I'm just using the scroll on my mouse where I can zoom in and I can see all of the package dependencies. Now, there's a lot going on here. So if you highlight a specific um, package, you can see all of the different arrows. And if you click on a specific line or arrow, you can kind of navigate through and see where it goes to because it can be kind of confusing since there are so many dependencies. So it's also important to note that, um, and I'll drag around here, that whatever models that we have within a package um, that are associated, I should say, is the square that's in here. So for the directory package, we have directory and security reports models. And I can kind of click and drag up here and we can look at all of the different package dependencies that we have. So we have cost accounting, policy, case management. And again, if I go all the way up to the top here, I can see the application suite, which then has SCM controls, application suite tax books integration, and so on. And we can see everything. And our new model um, would be in here as well if we wanted to find that. So we can go ahead and scroll out. And we know that it is referencing the application suite since we made that. Um, but if we wanted to, we can see if we can find our um, model that we have just created. But as you can see, there's quite a bit. And again, we can click on all these arrows to kind of see where everything um, is going throughout the entire system. Again, I'm just doing a simple click and drag. So next what I'll do is I'll show you um, where you can view all of your packages in the local directory. So I'll go ahead and click on my file explorer. And this is, might be in two separate places. So if you are running on an Azure hosted environment, it's most likely going to be on the J drive. Um, if you are running on a local machine, it could be on the C um, drive as well. So it just kind of depends on what type of environment you are using. So I'll go ahead and double click on the J drive since I'm working on a cloud hosted machine. We'll go to the AOS service and I'll click on packages local directory. So this is where I can find all of our different packages. So if I scroll down, I should be able to see my new um, extension test package. I might need to do a um, 
refresh, but as we can see, I can see my extension testing. If I double click on it, I can then see the descriptor information. If I click on my extension testing, I can see um, any references. Um, so we can see here, application foundation, platform suite. We can see if this is locked and the layer it is a part of um, and so on here in the descriptor file. If I go back um, to my others, I can go to, for instance, let's just look at the application suite. We can see there's a lot more because there's actual objects within this. So if I go to, for instance, the foundation folder, we can see all of the different objects here. So we can see their classes and we can see there's quite a few. We can also see the Delta folder here as well. In this lesson, I will cover the new extension model in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. It will review the concepts and features of models, packages, and layers. Elements in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations are the objects that reside in the AOT in the Application Explorer. Some, example of, some examples of elements are tables, forms, menu items, and so on. Collectively, these elements are what define the system and dictate what the users will see on the front end. Elements can be customized once they are added to a specific project or model. A Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations model is a group or collection of elements that constitute a distributable software solution. A model is a design time concept. For example, there may be a warehouse management model or a fleet management model. A particular model may contain multiple Visual Studio projects, each containing a subset or all elements from the originating model. However, a project may only be associated with one model. A Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and operation, or Operations package is a deployment unit that may contain one or more models. In addition to elements, this includes model metadata, which is the description data that define the properties and behavior of the model. Lastly, a package can be exported to a file, which can then be deployed into a staging or production environment. So here we can see on the left-hand side or in the green boxes, we have all of these different projects, which again are assigned to, are included within a model, and you can have multiple projects within a single model. And then, as you can see, all of our models are then going and pointing to our packages, are included in our packages. And again, it's important to note that you can have several models in one package. So here, an example is we have project one, two, and three. Those are all in model one, the fleet management model. And then the fleet management model is within package number one. Let's talk a little bit more about models. First, models are a group or collection of elements. They can be created using a wizard in Visual Studio. You will enter metadata about your model and create it within a specific layer. Technically, models overlayer each other. We will look at the package reference diagram to illustrate how models can reference and overlayer model. Again, this is a design time concept and may contain multiple Visual Studio projects. Metadata for models is stored locally on an XML file called the descriptor XML. It's also important to note that a project can be tied to one model. The application stack has been divided into three distinct models. First is the application platform. The application platform, as displayed here, includes things like the runtime and data access. This is the core business logic that Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations operates from. It also includes workflow and services to allow you to integrate to other programs and run configurable business processes through your defined flows. It also includes the client and presentation layer to access the graphical user interface. And finally is the SSRS reporting layer, which is used to present operational reports in the rich client using SQL server reporting services. The application platform technology is used to support the core functions of 365 for Finance and Operations. That and the application suite is built upon. This is things like the organization model, which supports visual modeling of your organization entities, such as units and departments. 
number sequences which support logical numbering for your data and documents through the system, the global address book which is designed to centralize and share address information for various entities, and then lastly, source documents. This is the framework which supports documents such as purchase orders and free text invoices. And then finally is the application suite. The application suite is rich in functionality, including things like financial management, inventory and warehouse management, human resources, and much more. The application can also be extended to include customized applications, which we will be doing throughout this course with the examples from Fleet Management. Let's now take a moment to review packages. A package is an independent individual set of layers and models. It can contain one or more models. It's also a set of folders that consists of XML files representing the elements in the system. In this way, a package can be viewed as a mini model store. A package translates directly to unit of compilation, which is an assembly or DLL file. Packages can reference other packages, similar to how .NET assemblies can reference each other. When a package references another package, it can access the models and elements within the referenced packages. This is the basis for how the extension framework will function. It's also important to note that one or more packages can be combined to create a deployable package. And lastly, XML files are stored in the model directory that sit inside the package directory. Layers are still relevant within Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. The new process is to extend them, so the layering process now resembles the graphic shown here. Previously, layers were a single code stack that overlayered upon each other. This was relevant if none of the sys or var layers changed. The new methodology still uses layers, but they are now located in independent stacks.